Well, hello. It's me, Wes Nyanewa Sosola, once again, with my update for this week. Such a lovely morning outside. It's chilly. The weather is definitely shifting from a rainy weather, rainy season. We are going to cold season. Actually, we've been without rain for close to two weeks now here in Lilongwe. Yeah, and this, this is definitely a sign that the weather is shifting. Yeah, but I'm excited that at least from the outlook, the crop seems to have done better seems to have matured in the garden and Malawi being a predominantly agricultural driven economy I think it's good news it's good news that we've got good rains this year that is it just to go back to what I talked about last week you know i shared with you how i transitioned from being a town girl as a five-year-old going to the village and today i want to share with you how life turned out right there at the village for me as a young person as a girl or a child actually or five years old in my innocence life was just about joys and happiness really from the little that i can recall from my memory it was all good for me at the village i was so excited i was so happy if at all, there is anyone who's having problems with me staying at the village was my parents because as adults they could see that oh I think I think this girl if she continues to stay here in, in the village her future is gonna be doomed especially because of these two reasons that I'm gonna share with you the first one is at the village that time, since I moved there, maybe, I don't know, because of change of weather or because of the soil, the water, I don't know what, but I used to develop some sores in my legs, in my body, especially in my legs. I developed a lot of sores. And I also remember that at one point I became really sick to the point that I was admitted at the hospital for some time. I can't really recall. Maybe I should ask my mom that how long did I stay at the hospital, but I stayed there for a while. It was a serious sickness. The second reason is that the school was very far. I'm not sure exactly in mileage terms, how many kilometers it was, but I can just give an estimate of maybe almost four to five kilometers from my village. That means walking to and fro, it will be ten, eight maybe kilometers a day for a young child of five years. I think it's not a joke. And also just to say that we did not have transportation that time in the village. And I remember one day when I went to the school, I got really bored that during break time, I decided to skip the rest of the day, to skip school. So I had taken bread as a snack to school that day 
And just to mention that those days, bread in the village was more or less like just a luxury to most of the people. So for me, honestly, maybe I was the only one who would take bread to school. So when I skipped school, I, I started walking back alone, going home. It was a very scary route going home, especially the biggest threat where maybe wild animals like hyenas and maybe snakes. There was also mention of uh, some buffalo sightings there at the village. So those were the biggest threats and yeah. Those days, human beings were very good people. Not many stories of human abductions and kidnappings. Humans were pretty good people then. So I, I, I went, I walked alone all the way home. Then my relatives at school realized that they couldn't see me. When they tried to check on me, I wasn't there. Then they started looking all over around the school for me, thinking that I was lost. But somebody spotted a trail of breadcrumbs heading in the direction of my village, my home. That's when they said this should be breadcrumbs from her snack and she should have gone home. So they started following the trail until they reached my house and I was so scared that I had to hide in the chimney. Yeah, so that's how it turned out. <laughs> yeah, then my mom and my aunt who used to stay in town discussed and thought that, oh, if we let this girl live here in the village, her future is going to be doomed. So my aunt agreed to take me to the village. I mean to take me to town in Ililongwe. And I have to tell you guys that we have living angels in this world. I'm really thankful and appreciative to what my aunt did because it turned around my future. More especially, really, I'm so grateful to God because of the divine intervention. Actually, this is part of my journey, my testimony. God wanted me, perhaps, to have a feel of both lives and so that I should be grateful for his provisions. Because honestly, everything that I have, I look at myself and my past and I say, God, I don't deserve the kind of life that I have, the person that I am, my family. I don't deserve anything at all. I don't deserve it. I just owe it to God. Not that I'm the most clever person or that I'm the most intelligent person or wise person. No, but it's the grace of God, His favor. He decided to shine His light on me so that at the end of the day, I may use His gifts to me for blessing others. You know, there are other people, maybe they had the same background as mine, but their future turned out in a different way. You look at the street kids, for example, all the misfortunes that they go through, the orphans, the homeless, 
And sometimes I say, how special am I that I'm not like that? You know, life sometimes is so confusing looking at the dichotomy between these two paths. Like that some people are just living in a careless life. They, ho they have excess food. But you look at others who are really in luck. We should be thankful to God for everything that he has given unto us. I've been trying my whole life to be a giving person just to, as a way of appreciating to God for his goodness. I don't find it difficult to give towards organized groupings maybe orphanages, groupings that reach out maybe to the needy or to school children. And also, I don't find it really difficult to help the people that I think are working hard to make ends meet, but they're finding it difficult. I also don't have a lot of struggles helping those. But I struggle with helping the needy people who are just loitering around in the streets. I feel sorry for them because really, for a normal person, you wouldn't just be going around the streets and beg. They've got challenges. But guys, I need some advice. I need you to help me with this because sometimes I'm thinking that, okay, if I help this street kid on the, on the streets, am I not encouraging this behavior? Or am I not encouraging the laziness? I think a lot about it. Sometimes I say, okay, this person has got all the limbs. At least he can go and work. But then I'm struggling. I'm really struggling to say, not that I don't entirely help. I do sometimes give to these street kids in the streets, but I do struggle. So really, guys, just leave a comment in the comment section and give me some advice on how I should go about this. Because sometimes I think that won't Jesus ask me that I was thirsty, you never gave me drink, or I was hungry, and you didn't give me food. I was cold. And you never give me something to make me warm. So help me, guys, this situation with the street kids. How should I go about it? Should I, should I just give anyway? Without thinking about the circumstances and the situation? Your advice would really liberate me because it's a real struggle that I do face. But just to encourage you that we need to be generous people. As a faith, as a person of faith, a Christian to be specific, the word of God teaches us generosity. Because, hey, we don't deserve anything, everything that we have. We don't deserve anything at all. It's all by the grace of God.
yeah so those were my thoughts today guys i just need your advice just leave a comment in the comment section and if this is your first time listening to this channel please subscribe so that you are alerted every time i post a new recording thank you so much guys i really appreciate you bye